Hello. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Hello, folks, and welcome. You join me today at the 2022 Goodwood Festival of Speed. It's my favorite car event out of all of them ever. I just love it. I've been doing it now for the last five years religiously and yeah, I don't go to any other car show. I just do the Goodwood Festival of Speed. And I thought to myself, do you know what? I want to go make a video about this. I thought at first, let me do some walk arounds and first introductions of some of the new hottest cars. And then I realized, hang on a minute, there's no way I'm gonna be able to do it because the last couple of days it's been properly busy. So I thought to myself, let me come later in the day wait until it closes and show you some of the cars that have been around. I have filmed earlier as well too, so you'll see a continuation. So there are some really tasty cars out here and I thought I'd do like a tour guide video of what it's like to be at Goodwood Festival of Speed 2022 as a punter. So yeah, you join me at the JLR stand. Over there's the AMG stand. There's plenty of other bits. Over there's the M3 Touring. So what we'll do is it's gonna be like a run and gun type of thing. You're gonna to get to see some of the cars I haven't seen first time around. And it will be like a tour guide video. So yeah, let's see how this goes. This is a bit different to sliding cars around and doing reviews. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon so you can see me talking nonsense about cars. So yeah, let's crack on. Now things you need to know at Festival Speed, you need to take the worst shoes you've got because they're gonna get covered in dirt. And also I would seek, well, this isn't gonna be a secret, is it? But try and come later in the day if you want to have a good view around of some cars. This is gonna be absolutely rammed full of people in the middle of the day. And yeah, while we're at the JLR stand, we might as well come over and have a little walk around of this. That's the new Range Rover Sport. It doesn't look too dissimilar to the previous model. It's an all new car, all new changes, new powertrains. Oh, what's going on with the grill there? It's got like three separate grills. That's uh, it's pretty crazy. That's the all new full-size Range Rover. That one's a plug-in hybrid. In fact, I don't know the specification. Let's have a little walk around. Bloody hell, reviews cars and now has to read certain things. So it's 101,000 pounds. It's the P440 E autobiography. So I presume it has an engine of some sort. What does it have? I don't know. It doesn't say what size engine it has. I presume a petrol and with a plug-in motor. So there you go. Well, that's not very consumer advice. Let's move over to this. This is the Range Rover. Well, it's not called Vogue. It's just called full-size Range Rover. And yeah, again, it's a lot sharper to look at. I quite like these new lights that go across it. That looks pretty cool. And over this side is the new Defender. When I say new Defender, it's the Defender 130. So it's even larger than the 110. You can't get this with a supercharged V8, but you can get it with the three litre straight six hybrid, 400 horsepower, or the go-to engine in my opinion to have is the three litre diesel, because you get 300 horsepower, plenty of torque, and it does the job. I love the spec on this. Maroon red, dark, almost dark stealthy gray wheels, kind of works in this configuration. Very long though, very, very long. This car, what's the, what's the price on this? Let's have a little look. So base price is 76, with options as displayed is 82,190 pounds. It's quite expensive for a mud plugger, but yeah, that doesn't look too, too bad. Over there is the 90, that's pretty nice. Over at the BMW stand, I've already talked about this previously on the M3 Touring, but here's one here for the carbon ceramics. Wow, in purple, it does look really good. You know what I'm gonna say though? It needs silver wheels, but nonetheless, it looks really, really nice. And over here is another one with some M Performance bits. It's got the M Performance side skirts, gold wheels. That looks proper mean. Look at that. Not usually a fan of blacked out cars. I was a fan when they first came out in terms of like blacking out cars. But this, this looks so nice. And you know what? I can't believe I'm saying this, but the grill's working. When it's all blacked out, it actually looks all right. I mean, look at that with the gold wheels. Mm, that is that is very, very special. Which one? Which one would you go for? Answers in the comments down below. Purple 
or black. You decide which one you prefer out of the two. I'm going to look at this. Look at that. Oh, my favourite M3, the E46 CSL. Lightweight version. Obviously, the gap between this is about 19 years. It's been 19 years since BMW did the CSL on the E46 M3 to the M4 CSL. I mean, look, this is just, for me, this was peak era design of BMW. It just looks stunning. And obviously that lip spoiler, which harks back to the three liters and 3.2 CSLs. You can see some of the design language from this has been carried over to the M4. M5 CS, which looks really, really cool. And then we've got this E30 M3. That's gorgeous. Yeah, looks proper cool. So over at the Merc stand, there's this lovely 190 3.2 AMG. Really cool car, that very rare. But over here is the new Mercedes C63 AMG. Now, obviously, it's not officially out as of yet, as you can tell by the camouflage wrap. And sad news, guys, no more V8. It's now got a two litre turbocharged four cylinder with hybrid technology. We know this day was coming and don't get me wrong, I'm slightly disappointed of the fact that it hasn't got a V8. I get it, we have to move on. Downsizing, turbocharging, exhaust emissions, but I mean, that's what made the C63 special because dynamically it was never the best. And um, you know, the trade-off was always the fact that it had a V8 and I'm sure this car is gonna be mega to drive, well accessing. 600 odd horsepower, 0 to 60, close to three seconds dead. But yeah, it does look cool though. It does look very, very striking. Let me know what your thoughts and opinions are on the C63. You're probably the same as me. Um, I'm just gutted there isn't a V8 anymore, but hey, it is what it is. Other than the new C63 at the Merc stand, here is the new AMG GT four door. So there's been massive changes to this car. It's still got the same four litre twin turbo V8 like the old car, but it's now got a hybrid system. In total, this thing produces 843 horsepower. It's an absolute rocket ship of a thing. Love to get my hands on that. I reckon that would slide really, really well. And over here on the left, let's take some appreciation of this. My favorite Merc CL. This is a 55. It just looks great. This one's the F1 edition, so it came with a few other upgrades, stuff that was carried over to the bigger brother CL65, and it's got a little bit more power. Doesn't this just look like a boss? I'm gonna go straight on Facebook Marketplace and look for one of these. Look at this. This would be a great car on the channel as a project, I'll tell you that. Look at this, 812 super fast, burgundy red, silver wheels, tan interior. Yeah, that does look Oh, it's chrome wheels. Yeah, that does look nice. Further down, there's this, the Mercedes SL. It's now called an SL55. They've brought the SL back on this. You can get a 63, this one's got a little bit less power, but first impressions, looking at it, it looks rather nice. It's still giving me those SL vibes. The rear is kind of like AMG GT Roadster, but Maybe it's basically an AMG GT Roadster, but rebadged, but it actually isn't. It's an all new car, as you can see. I don't know if you can see from there, but it's got a new interior with the new MBUX stuff. Yeah, it looks all right. Right, over here is the Ford Ranger Raptor. Now, I was a big fan of the old version. Can I say old version Raptor? Yeah, let's call it that. Raptor because it had the clever suspension, you could do crazy jumps in it, you could muller it. But the downside was it came with a very underpowered diesel engine that did like 0 to 60 in 10 seconds. Ford have listened, and this is the solution. This one has got a twin turbo V6, lots of power, and as you can hear, it's quite fruity. I mean, a car like this should really have a V8, but hey, it's better than maybe not having an electric motor, some of you might say. So yeah, it looks really, really cool. In fact, I'm looking forward to getting my hands on this because I'd really like to push it right up to the test. Did see it go up the hill, it's doing some fantastic skids. Yeah, it looks very menacing in the flesh and unlike an F-150 Raptor, this one, um, yeah, this one is quite cool. Right, here we are at the drift car slash rally car paddock. I mean, if you love rally cars and drift cars, this is the place to be. Get this out, the Citroen ZX rally raid that's really cool the zara old wrc car here subarus galore look at it look at it 
This is the 2009 Focus WRC car. I've got a model of that somewhere at home. I don't know where it is, but I need to find that. I've definitely got an RC car Tamiya at home with that as well too. And then we've got touring cars. Check it out. It's brilliant. It is brilliant. I mean, this is why I love Goodwood. You've got a vast variety of everything catered to what the petrol head wants. I mean, look at that. E30. Look at the Volvo S40 here. 1998 touring car. Over on the other side of the WRC cars, over here, we've got the legendary Group B stuff. So let's start here. We've got a Metro 6R4 Group B rally car. Then a Ford RS 1700T Group B. We've got this, the RS 200. And then my personal favorite, or one of my favorites, shall I say, is this the Audi S1 Quattro. I mean, oh my word. If you see this and you want to hear it, there is nothing else that sounds like this. It is truly crazy. And over here, which is, I think it's having some work done, is a 205 T16 Peugeot Group B rally car. And then we've got some back car cars here as well too. Look at that. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, where else do you get a Group B rally car mixed with a WRC car, mixed with touring cars, and then you've got drift cars over there. It is nuts. Gordon Murray T50. Oh my word. Do you know what it looks? just as good in the flesh than it does in the pictures. In fact, the most controversial thing is the rear end. But you know what? It does look all right. There's old Mark Higgins over there in the corner. If you don't know who he is, he does all the stunt driving for the Bond film. Yeah, that looks good, that rear end. That looks stunning. Proper bit of kit, that. Over at the Alpina stand, I don't, I'm not sure if you can call this a stand. It's, got a couple of cars and some in there you've got the b4 and then you've got the d3s bi turbo touring three liter straight six twin turbo diesel probably the ultimate of ultimate dailies i know the m3 touring is the ultimate but look this does a good combination of good fuel economy and performance looks really nice in that blue the silver rims god that does look nice this doesn't look too bad for a grand coupe but more inclined to that cool Alpinas are very special cars. They don't get the credit they deserve. Right, over at the Lotus stand, yeah, obviously we know about the Amira sports car. Can't wait to have a go in that, I'll be honest with you. But look at this. This is Lotus's first SUV, first electric SUV. It's called the Elytra. Saw it from the pictures. It did look very striking. In fact, in person, it looks even better. Can't get a combustion engine, only an electric motor. Some of you might argue that. Colin Chapman might be turning in his grey, but hey, this is the future, it's one of those ones, but it does look very striking. In fact, this car's giving me Lamborghini Urus vibes. I think it's gonna be a lot less money. They haven't announced price or performance as of yet. It is very, very fast, obviously, because it's a Lotus and it's gonna have an electric motor and all the EVs are super fast, but yeah, it looks very timeless. Love the fact that it's got pillarless doors as well. It's got like a coupe vibe to it. This is going to be, I presume, this is top seller, so if anything, this is more important than the Amira. This is the supercar paddock, and look what we have here. The Porsche Cayman GT4 RS. It now finally has the engine it deserves, something which I never thought it would actually happen. A four litre, flat six, revs to 9,000 RPM, PDK only. I suspect they will make a manual version of this, but oh my goodness, does this look aggressive. I mean, look at that front arch. It's got those ducts, the same as what we find on a G3 RS. This thing looks so aggressive. Oh man, that is nice. That is properly nice. And right next to it is a GT2 RS with a performance kit. And on this performance kit, it has, it's a bit dark here, but look at that. Look at that wheel. That's... That's properly aggressive. Manti Racing, of course. This is a serious bit of kit. Most of the cars are all covered up, but that, imagine that's your two car garage. Manti Racing GT2 RS and a GT4 RS to just, I don't know, float about in. I love this induct intake bit. Look at that. So cool, so, so cool. Over here is the AMG Project One. 
basically an F1 car for the road. Mercedes have taken their time actually developing this because they've had struggles with the engine. In fact, you've got to remember an F1 engine idles at 6,000 RPM. So how the hell do you get the emissions to run? It now idles at 1.5. It's got various different electric motors. It's even got an electric motor just to keep the engine response running. It's festooned with technology thousand horsepower it's got those aero bits that sort of deploy on itself first impressions it looks really really cool it looks like a modern day version of today's world of what the clk gtr would have been so yeah it's a very special bit of kit yeah so that's pretty much everything done for this evening obviously i've started a little bit later on today it's easier to get stuff done in the evening and just show you some of the cars rather than in the day because it's it's just difficult there's so many people anyway lights out from there and we'll pick up in the morning hello everyone it's day two of festival of speed I'm not in the actual grounds of Festival of Speed. In fact, we're over where all the motorhomes are. So it's not too bad around here, to be fair. And the reason why we're over here is because I really want to show you some of the cars that exist. Let's start off with this one. It's basically a Rolls-Royce Phantom drop-head convertible. Lovely bit of kit. I do love a Rolls-Royce. Never in my life have I seen so many Koenigseggs in one spot. There is virtually everything here. You've got Regera, CCX, Agera R. It's, it's nuts, absolutely nuts. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight Koenigseggs, it's ridiculous. I'm not sure whether we should be here, but sorry, it will just come through. But it's lovely. I mean, this is some of the things I love about Festival Speed. Yeah, you've got the main event, but even just the car park where it's basically a field, you get, to, you get to see some really cool bits. And um, yeah, this is properly special. This, the Wira BC Tempesto. So it's got a bit more power. It weighs 1,200 odd kilos and it just looks stunning. I actually don't know too much about it. I know it's their new car that's been released, but I don't know what it is. It's just so aesthetically pleasing. In fact, I'm just gonna shut up. You can just look at that for five seconds and just absorb it all in. Oh. Yeah, that's all you need to know, really. Why a BC? Tempesto. Right then, so you join me in the new BMW 7 Series, but it's not called a 7 Series, it's called an i7. You can still get it with a combustion engine. You can still get it in fully electric mode. When I say still get it, it it's new now. So basically you can get a 7 Series that's all new electric. Now, let's talk about the styling because when I first saw this car, I did think um, it wasn't a looker. And don't get me wrong, it's still not the prettiest 7 Series, but I'll tell you what, it's so purposeful. The front end looks ridiculous, but what's more impressive is the interior. I'll tell you what, from just sitting in it, this is the benchmark of interiors. It's festooned with technology. It's got doors that open and close by itself. It's got, it's just so well made, so well put together. It's got this new display as well too that's got its own screen which is part of the LCI which is also on the new M3 Touring and the latest 3 Series with the latest BMW iDrive. I mean there's so much tech to talk about I don't even know where to begin. In fact what we'll do is we'll hop in the back. In fact follow me let me just go to the back. Right what's cool about this interior is let me press that button. Actually press that button. Look at that. The door closes itself. How cool is this? Now this interior is just beautiful. You've got like carpet rugs, which looks like it's been lifted straight out of a Rolls Royce, which is funny because that's owned by BMW. But the PS resistance is, let me, let me figure out how to work this home cinema thing. Hang on, fire TV, oh no, hang on. And here we go, look, I've just hit theater mode and here comes the screen. Oh my word, look at that, it's crazy. And if, oh wow, you can bring it forwards or backwards. Basically, you've got a 22 inch TV and you can watch all sorts on the go. This is a game changer of big limousines. It's, yeah, it's really, really cool. These pillows are so nice. You could just spend time in this. Yeah, I like this. 
I think the new Mercedes S-Class is in trouble. I thought it'd be great to have a walk around of some of the McLaren F1s. And there's a sheer variety of all of them. Let's start with this one, because that's the most famous one. I think it holds the record of the most expensive insurance claim crash. If you don't know, this car was once owned by Rowan Atkinson and it got written off twice. Well, it's been in two accidents. And I think the bill was like 900,000 pounds or something crazy. It's now owned by someone else. It's got quite a lot of miles this one and it looks pretty crazy but there is one two three four five six mclaren f1s six i don't even know where to start uh, um, let's go right this is the high downforce mclaren f1 so obviously it's got the aero bits on it bit crazy bit wild then we've got the prototype xb4 over there which is obviously one of i think it held a record um, for something I can't remember off the top of my head. Over here we've got the F1 GTR Longtail, also known as Squiggles. This car was roamed about in London with no livery early in the winter. <sighs> Crazy. I've never seen so many F1s in one spot. Another F1 here. Goodness gracious me. Um, Claren F1s. I think that's everything done for the Goodwood Festival. Actually, what a, what a way to end this video. You know, you've seen everything. Hopefully, if you've never been to Goodwood Festival of Speed 2022, come to the next year's one, 2023. It's mega. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're into JDM cars only, whether you're into sports cars, whether you're into hypercars, supercars, it's got the lot. And it's just great because you get to see all Petreds come together and enjoy what we love most, which is cars. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Please like, please hit the subscribe button. And until next time, folks, see you later.